So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to try and first of all take off the uh, the propellers so we can see uh, what is what is causing the propellers to turn. So we're going to take our hacksaw here and we're just going to cut right through um, right through that. Try our ply our nipper pliers here. They have done a good job of designing this propeller to stay in place when it's being used. So they've made it really hard to get off. Okay, so you can start to see the motor here. We've got a couple screws right here that looks like we can take out. Okay, so uh, we've got our our uh, plastic propeller torn up pretty good and removed, and we have a little piece left here. And uh, I'm going to see if we can uh, pry that off with our with our screwdriver here. There we go. We got it loosened up. You definitely want to be careful when using a screwdriver like that, because um, it can always slip and get you. Okay, so we've got our, uh, it looks like a brass fitting at the end of uh, the axle of the motor, and uh, that brass fitting uh, allows the uh, propeller to fit snugly. The propeller is like pressure fitted onto that brass fitting, and it holds it in place very well. So let's take these screws here out. Okay, so we're able to pop the uh, plastic piece off, and then around that there's a there's a metal shim, and uh, this is this is of course what held the uh, the cowling around the the motor and propeller, and it gave the it, it held the motor there was the the bracket that held the motor in place. So let's see if we can take this off. So this is just a metal it looks like a rolled stainless or a rolled. Uh, Galvi steel uh, uh, shim that that fits in gets it creates a nice snug fit there so that it doesn't rattle around. Okay, so now we can see the motor right here, and this says it's an RS three eight five SA two seven three. All right, you see those numbers. Let's take a look. Let's uh, we're going to take a look online and see what that means. So you may be wondering, how do you figure out uh, where this motor comes from, what its, ex what its specifications are, uh, how many volts it takes, what kind of current it requires, and things like that. So the way we can find that out in order to use it for our little bot is we can look on the, the side of it here and we can see our specifications. So it says RS, so we're in uh, just, just our internet browser here, we're going to type in uh, RS. And then it says dash 385SA, 5SA dash 2073. All right. And we got motor in there already. And it says uh, DC motors, Kaisan motors. All right. So this is a, a specification sheet. And we can, we're going to see if we can find our motor on this sheet. And that will give us some data about it. So we're going to hit, uh, just zoom in here for you. Um, so RS2073, so okay, this is our motor right here. So its operating range is 9 to 24 volts. It likes to run. Nominal voltage is at 20 volts. Uh, it says uh, with no load, uh, it can, uh, its RPM can be, will be, uh, the speed will be 17,200 rotations per minute. And it'll take uh, 0.2 amps. So uh, 0.2 amps. And then the speed uh, at maximum efficiency is 14,420. And the current that it's going to take is one, uh, one amp worth of current there. And uh, you can see how much torque it has here. It says 
The, the amount of torque that it has is 9.49, uh, and that uh, looks like Newton millimeters. And, uh, then, it, and then as far as uh, uh, torque, you can see another specification here for that, and that's um, uh, 96.7 nine, gram centimeters. And uh, output is 14.3 uh, watts. So 14.3 watts, and you can buy it. It's, they've got a price list here for around four, between four and five dollars, depending on how many you buy. Okay, so we have a good idea of what the specs for this motor are, and because we know that we can run it between nine and 24 volts, I think we're going to try and run it at uh, a higher voltage than nine volts, because its optimal operating speed is is or operating voltage is 20 volts. So uh, we're going to try and run it a little little higher than that. I think we're going to go for 12 volts. And uh, yeah, so let's see what's inside it and see how it works. Okay, so we're going to uh, take apart our hairdryer motor and show you what's inside it and how it works. Uh, we're just fitting it snugly between these two pieces of wood that we've clamped down. And uh, we're going to uh, cut into it from the side. So we're going to mark that with our shar Sharpie. And uh, the reason we're doing this is so that you can see all the different parts of the motor assembled together. A lot of times when they show motors uh, on the inside, they take the back off and you can't see all the, how all the pieces fit together. So we're going to try and do that there. And we're using our uh, Dremel with a cutoff tool and we're cutting through the, uh, the sides of the motor. It's really important if you do this that you use both eye protection and uh, breathing protection because those fine particles that the Dremel produces are not good to breathe or get in your eyes. And, so here we go, we're just using our hacksaw to, to pry off the, uh, the outer housing, and uh, this is our south pole magnet. We're grabbing our, uh, grabbing our uh, needle nose pliers and taking out the broken bits of magnet. There's still another magnet in there, another permanent magnet, that's the north pole one. And right now we're trimming through the outside of the uh, housing at the top, and this will expose our uh, brushes, which are, are where the power comes from, or how the power gets to the commutator, I should say. Be sure to check out our other videos on how to make a motor and how motors work.